Good morning, good morning, third grade. For today's history lesson, I'm just gonna go over some major points for the life of Emily Robin. Now, Emily Warren Robin, she had 11 brothers and sisters. That's a very big family. But she was close to her older brother, Governor. Now, Emily, she loved reading and was curious about many things. Now, as a teenager, she still wanted to learn more. So her brother, Governor, paid for her to go to a special girl's school. That's where she studied subjects such as science, history, geography, and French. Now, during the Civil War, remember that was the war between the Union Army and the Confederate Army. Now, her brother, Governor, he was an officer in the Union Army. And when she went to visit him, Governor introduced to one of his friends who was an officer. His name was Washington Roman. Now, a year later, actually Washington and Emily, they became married. Now, let's get into the background of Emily's husband, Washington, Emily's, his, his, uh, his dad. His father was named John Robin, and he was hired. He was hired to build a Brooklyn Bridge over the East River in New York. Now, this bridge would connect the two cities of Brooklyn and Manhattan. Now, building this bridge would be one of the largest building projects in the history of America. Now, while John was walk, working on the bridge, Emily and her husband, Washington, they basically traveled to Europe to give Washington the opportunity to study the bridges over there. He wanted to learn all he could about the construction and about the sicknesses that was common with bridge builders. So when they came back from the States, that's when Washington took over the mantle of his job and he became the chief engineer. But shortly later, the sicknesses that Washington was studying on, he became very ill to the point where he wasn't able to get out of bed. So he would give his wife orders or directions to tell the workers and he would basically sit from home with a telescope and basically watch the construction of the bridge. It got to a point where Emily would go to that bridge every day and give the uh, construction workers basically orders from her husband. But it got to a point where some believed that bridge wouldn't be finished, basically due to the high cost and every time the, a lot of delays of work. But listen to this, Miss Roblin, she bravely spoke to all the American Society of Engineers. Now remember back that time in history, women didn't really have a voice at all. They didn't really have a voice. But Emily, she stepped up to the, to the idea and her ideas in the speech were accepted by the engineers. So they actually accepted her ideas of basically how to construct the bridge. And she supervised the construction of the bridge for 14 years. Now on May 24th, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge was finally completed. It was more than a mile long. The President of the United States and the Governor of New York were at the ceremony up to, to open the bridge. Now Emily, she was given the honor of the first person to ride across the bridge. Now, after the Brooklyn Bridge was completed, Emily designed a new family mansion and supervised its construction. And after that, she went to college at the age of 56. At the age of 56, she still wanted to continue learning. So she went to college and she received a law degree from New York University. Now, in 1964, the Brooklyn Bridge was named a National Historic Landmark. Now, on the Brooklyn side, you can see of the bridge, a plaque on the tower honors Emily Robin. So remember from a child, she wanted to learn to read, and her brother put her in a uh, special girl's school to the point as an adult where she traveled to Europe with her husband to learn about bridges, and then got to the point where she became a chief engineer as well because her husband became ill. And then a lot of people respected her. Like I said, she put on a brave, she showed great leadership. Because remember I said women didn't really have a voice, but they, they listened to her.